a week or two ago. I don't know when this video is coming out. School is whooping my ass, man. Please. I made a video on what I thought was the worst Persona Arcana. And I'm back after a lot, and I mean a lot of thought. In case you aren't aware, in Persona, they make use of tarot cards in their storytelling, specifically the major arcana, each arcana representing a character. I go more in depth on this, not really, in the other video. Watch it, it's good. Or don't. I knew going into this that it would be harder to decide, but I didn't know how hard it would actually be. Choosing the worst was really easy, because I don't really like any of the characters in the Moon Arcana. Persona is known for their good characters, and I think they're all written really well. But this isn't about how well they're written. It's about who's the best, which is hard because for every arcana, it feels like there's another character in the arcana that's just ruining it for the rest. Like with the magician arcana, it's already disqualified with Kenji oh, from Persona brother, 3. Brother, this guy stinks! I really do not like this man at all. He sucks. I hate him. The only person I hate more than him in this game is Porky the Pig over here. Wait, that's disrespectful to Porky. He's the worst kind of guy. He has no hobbies. All he does is fawn over girls. He's a serial goonie. Just bad vibes all around. Which sucks for Yosuke because he's catching a huge stray. I like Yosuke a lot. He's probably in my top 10 characters out of 3, 4, and 5. He's great, but he's being dragged even further down in the battle for consideration because Magician also houses the Navi of the Persona series. Hey, always telling you to go to bed, always popping up in that stupid text box to tell you the obvious. And that's not to mention, he always gets crit in every battle every single time without fail. And for that alone, ignoring his personality traits, I can't stand him. Some might argue it's unfair to judge a character off their gameplay stats and tendencies, but it's a game. So I'd argue that it's even more fair than a judge of character. Every day's great at your genius. For justice, the angel Nanako makes an appearance. Unfortunately, she's joined by Akechi. I'll never understand the hype around this character. He's only made bearable by the changes they made to his character in Royal. Although I will say, he's one of the funniest characters in that game, whether it's intentional or not. Let's have some fun! God, I live for this! Slaughter them! Oh yeah! <laughs> but even ignoring Akechi, there's still the ooh woo, I'm so precious, sweet and shy girl at your hero, which irks my nerves for some reason. I don't know why. I was born this way. This trend continues down the list too. Every arcana has characters that are just okay or having a character or two that ruins it for the character that I deeply love, like this nigga. But then I came across the Hierophant Arcana. The Hierophant Arcana stands for tradition, conformity, morality, and ethics, in reverse representing subversiveness and rebellion, which sets us up for some pretty interesting plot points to go over considering all the Persona games take place in Japan, one of the most traditional and socially oppressive societies. And these stories deliver. Not just that, but the characters are all fire too. And I'm gonna start us off with everyone's favorite Dilf. Sojo is introduced as this tough hard ass who takes no shit, but you can already see that that's not really the case from day one. In Persona 5, the protagonist was accused of a crime he didn't commit, and because of this, he's been labeled a thug. No one wants anything to do with him. His own parents sent him away because they didn't want to deal with the social pressure and ridicule that came with having a son who was a criminal. So the fact that Sojiro even took him in was already a hint at the kind of man that he is. Sojiro is strict with the protagonist, but still treats him with respect. He puts in a lot of effort seemingly to try and rehabilitate him. Even though we know the protagonist is innocent, he doesn't know that. So it really says a lot that instead of putting him out of sight and treating him like a burden, like everyone else, he puts in the effort to help him out, which is an incredibly kind gesture. Throughout his confidence as you spend time with Sojiro, he opens up to the protagonist and you find out he's actually tied to the main plot of the story. The love of his life and the mother of Futaba, a member of the Phantom Thieves, was a scientist and peer of his, who was killed because of the research she proposed on cognition, the whole point of the game, was so groundbreaking that it had the ability to shift the world order. He decided that making an enemy of the government wasn't worth it and then opened up his little small coffee shop that he has now. The main coffee recipe being an ode to his dead flame making it just how she used to. Futaba, in the wake of her mother's death, bounced from family member to family member, treated as disposable and a burden. So Sojiro took it upon himself to take care of her, providing her with all her needs, being extremely patient with her as she deals with the trauma of her mother's death. Sojiro on the outside is a smooth talking, tough playboy who seems reluctant to help, but he's always the first to support when it really matters. I'm a big fan of the tough guy who loves to help because it feels so much more authentic than the guy who helps everyone like it's second nature. My favorite portion of Sojo's character arc is when he finds out about the Phantom Thieves and supports them almost as if making amends for his inactivity back when Futaba's mother died. I really like Sojo, and if you don't, then you have no media literacy. 
Learn that insult from the comment section on the last video because everyone knows if someone doesn't like a character that you like, it means they have no media literacy. Bunkichi and Mitsuko are an old couple that owns a bookstore in Iwatodai Station in Persona 3. When you meet Bunkichi and Mitsuko, Bunkichi mistakes you for his son. You do a little chatting until they urge you to take a look at a persimmon tree that's on your school campus. This cute little thing right here. After bonding over your love for four foot trees, the couple takes a liking to you and you spend time with them occasionally. Everything is extremely casual and it's really heartwarming to just spend time with two sweet old people. Because in my line of work, the old people are anything but sweet. I have no sympathy for the elderly. This is actually one of the sadder stories in the game, but it kind of sneaks up on you. Through the interactions you have with Bunkichi and Mitsuko, it's revealed in small bits and pieces that the son that you were mistaken for met them is actually dead. No reboot card. It's 2009, they ain't have those techniques yet. He died in a car accident, which has left Mitsuko especially with a fear of cars. Not only that, but their son was a teacher at the school the protagonist attends. The persimmon tree being a memorial of sorts to honor his passing. This is sad and all, but this is where it gets really fucked up. Apparently, the school board wants to chop the tree down, you know, this little old non-invasive tree, so they can build another school building here. That has to be targeted, because you're telling me that there is no other possible location for this building to go other than right here? This entire campus is man-made, floating on the water, but you can't shift the building to the side a few feet. And even if it has to be right here, this tree could just be off to the side. You don't even have to cut it down. You have to move it. There's so many ways they could make this work, but instead they decide to distress this poor elderly couple. I mean, they could have at least waited till they died or something. They're already on death's door. Nevertheless, Bunkichi and Mitsuko actually decided to be reasonable and compassionate, saying that the children's education is more important than hanging on to the past that their son would want better opportunities for the students. Can we just take a second to appreciate how selfless and caring that is? To let your child's memorial be cut down? To prioritize the education of the new generation is poetic. This gesture of goodwill will surprisingly not go unnoticed as the directors on the school board realize that instead of being bastards, they could just move the tiny tree to a new location instead of needlessly killing it. I really love this story because throughout the social link we are shown, not told, how much this tree really means to the couple. So seeing them put the needs of others over their own sentiments means more than I think a lot of people realize. Put yourselves in their shoes. If you had a dead family member that was honored and some dude backed by a corporation told you they were replacing said memorial, even if it was for something that would help people like a homeless shelter, you'd probably feel some type of way. I know I would. So I respect Bunkichi and Mitsuko a lot, almost as much as I respect this man. When it comes to parenting, there's one thing that I think a lot of people don't really understand. It's so easy to be a bad parent. There are so many scenarios that enable someone to be a bad parent completely by accident. This isn't to excuse the people that are bad parents at all. It's actually to shine a light on the efforts of the good parents that go above and beyond even when the cards are stacked against them. Sadly, that is not Ryotaro Dojima, at least at the start. Ryotaro, Ryotaro, Ryotaro? Oh my God. Ryotaro is a detective and the uncle of the protagonist in Persona 4. The Dojima family used to be a happy one with Ryotaro, his wife, and his daughter Nanika. That would all change when his wife was victim to a hit and run succumbing to her injuries. This changed the once happy family into a fractured one as Ryotaro would dedicate himself to finding his wife's killer. Not only did he become obsessed with finding the killer, but he started spending more and more time at work as a sort of escape. This is the state of mind that Ryotaro is in when the player is introduced him at the beginning of the game. Naturally, this caused a rift between him and Nanako because he was essentially abandoning a six-year-old to her own devices. Not only did she have to deal with the death of her mother, but she had to deal with an emotionally distant father, spending most of her time alone, which is very damaging to a child's development to say the least. But this behavior is completely understandable in Ryotaro's defense. He's a man who had his heart ripped away and he coped with that in the only way he knew how. His methods may have been damaging to his child, but considering he was dealing with the death of his lifelong partner, I don't really blame him. Throughout his interactions with the main character during the game, he's reminded of the importance of family and ends up reconnecting emotionally with his daughter. It doesn't excuse all the time that he spent neglecting her and he knows that. He admits his wrongs, he doesn't make excuses for himself, and he earnestly works to make up for and better his relationship with his daughter, which makes him a better parent than many out there in real life. Admitting when you're wrong is a hard thing to do, especially once you realize that what you did hurt someone you love. Watching Ryotaro and Nanako rekindle their broken father daughter relationship is so heartwarming and my main motivator for progressing through the story. He's always been a good man, but even good men can be derailed due to any number of unforeseen circumstances. Not only is he my favorite character from this game, but this is my favorite story of all the Hierophants. Dojima is a king, and as far as I'm concerned, a great father.
It took me a while to decide what I thought would be the best Arcana. At the end, I'm glad I chose Hierophant because now that I did, I can't really see it any other way. At the end of the day though, you could really say any Arcana is the best and there's a good argument to be said for all of them except Devil. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Like the video if you enjoyed, take it easy, and as usual, have a good one.